both of you, uh, in, in various ways, some similar and some different, emphasize the significance of the federal government in uh, our ongoing uh, legacy of race and race relations, both as it plays out in the South and as it is a national issue. Could you talk a little bit about your philosophies and what you've found uh, from your study about uh, the role of the federal government in this, and, and um, maybe even we can look uh, contemporarily at where we stand uh, from your perspective as historians who are deeply uh, immersed in how the government has played a role in race relations? I think that a lot of the civil rights movement has been misconstrued, particularly because of Brown v. Board, uh, that as if African Americans were striving for integration and striving for educational integration. But if you look at the history, it's always about the vote. I mean, it really is, and it was always there. I remember uh, so many people, including ben, uh, uh, Benjamin Mays, who said, you know, about the anti-lynching law, we don't care, but give us the vote. We'll take care of that as long as you have a meaningful vote. And I think that's been critical, and it took someone from the outside to make sure that people had a meaningful vote, like, like Lyndon Johnson. So it's a, it's a tough issue when you think about Southern history and nullification and the kind of things going on to what extent that it has taken this balance of federal, state, and local to try to get a level playing field. The role of the federal government, of course, has been contentious ever since the Articles of the Confederation and the Constitution uh, period. Uh, so the, the current debate is not that unusual. Uh, the three men uh, I talk about, uh, Truman, Eisenhower, and Johnson, uh, came to the presidency with long and strong records of public service. Uh, Eisenhower, of course, in, in the military and as uh, supreme commander of the Allied forces during World War II, uh, became a president uh, and took office in 1953 with a long military career behind him. Uh, Harry Truman served in county government, uh, then as a U.S. senator and as vice president before he ascended to the presidency. And Lyndon Johnson had the longest uh, public service of all, starting at, tw at 23 uh, as uh, an aide to a congressman and, of course, working his way through the House and then the U.S. Senate uh, vice presidency and then, the, and then the presidency. There was no doubt in a e any of these uh, men's minds that the federal government uh, was a positive force in American life. It was positive. Uh, for uh, a couple of reasons. Positive, uh, first of all, uh, because it, it helped uh, level the playing field. Uh, it helped uh, make people uh, who were not participating or did not have the opportunities that everyone else did, uh, it helped them uh, open doors so that they would have the uh, opportunity. Uh, and you, you can trace the careers of all three men, and they are consistent uh, on, on that issue. And secondly, in terms of the uh, federal government, uh, the federal government uh, also uh, could promote economic development. And this was especially true uh, for men like uh, Johnson, uh, Truman, uh, and Eisenhower because they came from parts of the country which are relatively sparsely inhabited in, in some uh, portions. Uh, and issues such as rural elect electrification, uh, in terms of water conservation. Uh, these are issues that are really too expensive and too large uh, for individual states uh, to, uh, to take, take care of. Now, of course, there were elements in the Republican Party and, of course, among Southern Democrats that feared the federal government. Uh, and uh, ever since Ronald Reagan uh, said in 1980 that the government is the problem, uh, th this has become the mantra, not only of Republicans, but e even with uh, Democrats such as Bill Clinton and Barack o Obama, and Obama admires <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Uh, if you look at history, however, particularly the history of the first two decades after World War II, you can see the activism of the federal government uh, in building highways to span a nation, in building these beautiful uh, airport terminals, uh, to get people and goods uh, quickly uh, to all parts of the country and the world, in trying to eliminate poverty, 
uh, and successfully uh, using the law to advance opportunities uh, for women, uh, for African Americans, for the sons and daughters of immigrants. Uh, all of these beautiful and important measures uh, were promoted by our federal government. And the federal government is not perfect. Uh, I, I mean, this, we know with the rollout of, the, uh, uh, of Obamacare. Uh, but I think part of the problem with the rollout of Obamacare is, is that uh, our respect uh, for the federal government has eroded over the past uh, 30 years. So um, these things can happen. But if we have a vigorous uh, federal government a, and leadership that appreciates the historical role that the federal government has played in American history uh, in providing uh, for this level playing field, then I, I think we'd have a different perspective today.